Hello my Sockiners and welcome for the long overdue review of what happened over you know, the past week in Western Europe. Europe's most exciting title races, bar none. Uh, we have two absolutely tired tight ones. I think the French one is even uh, better than the Spanish one. And then I think Portugal, maybe, maybe not. Maybe we get a title race again. Those two, Sporting do their best to fend off um, Porto. But I, we also have, have, have to say that especially the midweek round in Spain um, that, yeah, I wanted to do a review vi vi video, but uh, due to time constraints, I didn't get really to it. But that midweek round in Spain was very much still under, under the influence of those three guys trying to uh, go into the Super League. Um, and all the broadcast had this little logo down there with the star ball from the Champions League and then earn it below, which I found interesting. And yeah, I mean, that midweek was not so exciting in terms of results because uh, the big three who fighting for the title, even the big four, five, five fighting for the title, all won. Uh, but it came a little bit apart and on the weekend with Real Madrid dropping points at home to Betis, Atletico losing late to Atletic Bilbao, whereas Barcelona gets two wins in a row and very much is now in the driving seat, driver's seat driving seat, driver's seat, whatever, for this title. So um, that... At the beginning of the season, or you know, so one third, third in, you thought Barbara might not make, make it to the Champions League, so pretty remarkable. Most action though happened in France. I mean, we had a, a really remarkable Coupe de France round with the fourth uh, team making it to the semis and Monaco getting a win over Lyon that they have no idea how and why. But in, in addition, PSG needed to win late. Monaco barely scraped by Angers and then we had the huge clash between uh, Lyon and Lille. That was just an amazing game to watch. Uh, back and forth and we had five goals in there. And yeah, Lille puts out the win. You cannot get rid of Lille. And for Portugal, um, it, uh, Sporting with a late fight back avoids the first defeat of the, of the season. But the other, especially Porto, comes a little, little bit closer. However, yesterday uh, Sporting gets a rather impressive win again. We'll talk about why it was so impressive because the scoreline would not suggest all that. So yeah, um, it's all exciting pretty much there. Let's start in La Liga where uh, Sevilla may or may not join the title race. I said it last time, every time I want to have them join it, they are not doing it. So I'm not calling them in the title race, but they're more or less securing their Champions League spot. And Naziri getting a win over uh, Levante. Let's go to the big games. Uh, I'm sorry, I will do mostly top uh, in this vi video, not talk too much about relegation, except for one little point, because it was just it was way too much to, to cover and I don't want to have a whole 40 minute video here because of upload time mostly. Cardiff against Real Madrid it was clearly still under the influence. When, when this was playing Florentino Perez, probably he's still hang, hanging on to the uh, Super League idea. But you know, Cadiz is not giving them a lot of uh, resistance. Bonzema with a penalty over Rezola, and again, Bonzema scoring three goals within 10 minutes in the first half, settling the game for Madrid. Kind of underlining, maybe we want to be still in this tie title race because we have uh, dropped the points against Getafe. Atletico definitely wanted to stay in, and they get, uh, you know, it was hard work, but they get a deserved win over Uesca. 3 0, Correa and uh, Carrasco, both assisted by Llorente, who potentially could have been sent off a little bit earlier on as well. Real Sociedad in a game that I said might be very entertaining and it actually was ent entertaining because uh, Maido gives Celta um, lead in the 22nd then Porto equalizes three minutes later. Another four minutes later uh, a penalty is missed by Isaac. However, in the 39th Yanuzai converts. So rather he went full but that was the 2-1 then there was not too, too, too much coming and it remained at the 2-1. And Barcelona get, a t I must say, a typical Barcelona win in this post Luis Enrique era, or even post Messi Ronaldo era, uh, where they, the opposition is kind of a little bit in the game, but Barcelona just is, I don't want to say gifty goals, but they just come in front of goal and score the goals where the others do, do not and then in the end, in the end there are a lot of goals scored on the Barca side. Messi very early on 
tries it first, I think, with his left, left foot uh, is saved, and then with his right foot from an acute angle, gets it into the net in the eighth. However, Langley with an own goal gives uh, Getaf an equalizer, who really, really, really was in the game. However, Jackler and the goalie don't have a really good com 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 communication, and it's a stupid own goal where Messi then adds a 3 1 on top of that, more or less settling the game. However, Getafe find themselves uh, way back with Unal uh, getting a 3 2 through a pen pen penalty that I think Arusho um, uh, caused. He himself in the 87 settles the game to make it 4 2. Uh, Messi assist, of course. Messi. I have to say, Messi is outstanding unless they're playing against uh, big teams. But other than that, Me Me Messi is outstanding and Messi even then gives Griezmann a penalty to make it 5-2. So, uh, in, in the end, very convincing. And Barcelona looks like the team set for the championship. Although after this round, it was still Atletico Madrid who hold, hold on and, and you see the top four all qualified more or less for the Champions League. On the bottom, just with all, all of the results, I have to say it, it is still very, very tight with Valencia and Getafe. Uh, Valencia potentially slipping in there, I think, slash hope not. However, I think from Getafe on, uh, those teams are potentially in trouble and Getafe have, have, having had a pretty rough stretch. Now, on the weekend, uh, Real against Betis, a rather disappointing nil-nil. More or less, Real Madrid, you know, yes, in injury problems and, you know, many, many games. We have a Champions League semi-final camp coming up. Maybe that all played a part, of it, especially if you see um, uh, the lineups that that is coming. Although Azar made a, com a, a comeback, but Betis was in the game and deserved that draw very much for sure. The one from the bottom is Wesker Getafe that I want to talk about. Um, Mostly because of the really interesting jersey that Huesca was playing in to play uh, to celebrate. Uh, I think it was the day of Aragon or something like that. However, Getafe gets the win despite the celebratory jer uh, jerseys with uh, Unal again scoring uh, and this time both goals and a win that probably puts Getafe more on the safe side and puts uh, Huesca a little bit more in trouble. Barcelona against Villarreal found themselves, find themselves down through Chukwese, but before that, uh, Frankie de Jong missed an absolute sit. I mean, gaping goal, and he just needs to pull it in the near corner. He goes to the, to the center, and yes, the goalie made a good save, but to, to where else that goal should, should, should be. But then it's Griezmann, who scores two, especially the first. The first one, I think, was a really nice uh, move. Gets the second one. Uh, the game kind of then, Villarreal trying to get in. Why did Barcelona, by the way, play in black? That is another thing. But once they get the uh, uh, VRL gets a red, red card, it goes squarely into Barcelona's direction, and uh, the young missing another huge, huge chance, uh, making it kind of, making it kind of more interesting than it needed to be. Sevilla, I think it was not a very tough win over Granada, although it got tight at the end with uh, Papu Gomez. Sun, uh, suddenly show, uh, asserting his impact on that side as well. I think he was fouled for the penalty that Rakotic converts in the first half and then Ocampos uh, um, is assisted by Gomez uh, in the uh, in the second half. Uh, lay, lay down Soldado, pulls from back uh, and then very fun for funny scene. Uh, the referee said there should be four minutes played. He calls a quits in the, uh, after three minutes. If, uh, the Sevilla players already le leaving the pitch. The uh, Granada players being really, really, really upset with that, and the referee actually had it play another minute more. But the only thing it was was maybe a small chance for Sevilla. But that was rather curious. And then Bilbao gets a win of Athletic. Uh, very well deserved lead in the first half. Athletic then slightly better in the second, um, asserting themselves and being a little bit more direct, being a little bit more offensive. They finally get the equalizer. So through Savage in the 77th, but then it's uh, again, that was from a, cor uh, a corner, and then an e by corner is headed in by Martinez in a typical Atleti fashion, and that, um, and that one will hurt. We still have a Monday night game, but I decided to do the video anyway, because we had quite some stuff happening. That win for Athletic uh, Club hurt a lot, because now Barca are the overwhelming favorites, and it really the tables have turned. If Barca win out, they are the champions. It's that easy. Um, I also want to say if Atleti wins out, they are the champions, but that's not so easy because they have to go to the new Camp 
very, very, very soon in a round where we also will have Real Madrid against Sevilla. So there will be a lot uh, decided. At the moment, Barca has a game in hand, but at the moment it's only three points. I'm not sure if Sevilla can join in there, but it's only three points between the top four. Really tight. However, give Barca the win and then um, it is four points. So um, just having that in mind. We also get a little bit more clarity on the bottom with Getafe now really uh, on safe. And it's Alaves, Elche, Rava, Dilit, Un and Uesca. And uh, as we can see, Alaves is also getting more on the safe side. So it's maybe four teams fighting for uh, the one safe spot. Will be interesting who will get out there. Um, with the game in hand, Barcelona would actually take the lead uh, in the table and also Athletic Club is a little bit better than the current standing shows. Uh, and then you expect foul standings now Barcelona with a three-point cushion. They are really, really look, looking strong to win this title that not too long ago seemed well beyond them. Um, Europa League spots that fight is also somewhat interesting. Uh, Real Sociedad having the advantage there. And on the bottom, yeah, Elche with that win that they got this weekend, maybe, maybe, maybe. I think the win was over Levante. So, um, they are at the moment in the strongest position, but uh, many games to be played, so it can still turn all kind of ways. Um, Midweek, uh, we have Athletic Club uh, against Real Valladolid and Barcelona against Granada. Should be, should be two wins for the home teams, but you never know. Uh, Granada is not an e easy opponent, and Real Valladolid is definitely fighting against relegation, so that might be a trap game. And then on the weekend, we have, I, I would argue, two really uh, big name games. I mean, nothing. Uh, the big, biggest one is definitely Valencia against Barcelona. But Sevilla Athletic Club, mm, sleeper, sleeper, sleeper. Although the way both team teams are playing, it's really probably a rather boring 1 0 for uh, Sevilla. But Valencia Barcelona could be. Um, St uh, stumbling stone. Atleti needs a win at Elche for sure, and Real Madrid probably uh, the win against Osasuna. Lots of talk about uh, La Liga. Let's move on to the French Cup. Rumi yeah fourth tier. They have not been playing because of COVID. They make it to the semifinals. 2 0 win over Toulouse. Pretty remarkable. The other fourth uh, tier team with Canet Roussillon loses at home. Uh, to Montpellier 2 1. Also rather tight. PSG no trouble with Angers. Uh, 5 0. 5 0. Icardi uh, scores, I think, two. A uh, hat trick even. Neymar gets one and then an own goal. Pretty, pretty convincing PSG playing in these jerseys. And I have to say, the French Cup is one of the weirdest com com competition jersey wise. Because uh, they used to have that everyone has to wear uh, Adidas, they have those in the 90s, and now all teams have to have the same sponsors. They are the two sponsors, Credit uh, Agricole and I think uh, a Supermarket, uh, PMU, or, some, or something like that. And uh, the home team plays in one, and the away team in another. It's so big, it looks so clunky, it is really, really, really weird. The big one, however, was Lyon against Monaco, and boy, was that a game! Lyon being uh, in two huge games and in both not on the winning side. Lyon should have led by three to four, if not five goals. Easily. Uh, already at the half, they score a goal and it's just by a fraction. Cornet is, you know, the, the pass is played out of, the, out, out of their own half and he's just standing a little bit over the midway line, or leaning over the midway line. So it's a fractional offside. Absolute, absolutely uh, backbreaking, and then immediately after, the uh, Diamant with a really high kick hits the face of a Monaco uh, um, attacker. As a penalty, the Benyeda in the 54th puts away, and so a game that was so much going into Lyon's way, where Monaco had no foot in there suddenly turns on that and then Monaco gets the second one through Kevin Folland in the 61st and the game is settled right there. A game that was so not going Monaco's way. So Monaco moving on and they get the Remy uh away from home and PSG has to go to Montpellier. Also not the easiest games uh, to have in the league. PSG uh, get a very early goal through Mbappé, um, you know, I in control, however, right after they have Canton, uh, Cantons, 
uh, contours uh, gets the equalizer, but then a pretty bad back pass to Mbappé uh, from a Mets defender to Mbappé uh, sets PSG on the, on, on the way to win. Mbappé gets a little muscle injury or knock over there, but over here he's fine. And then later lay on, Icardi converts a penalty. Icardi actually pretty good in shape at, at, at for, for, for a player that's not playing all, all the much. Pretty impressive. PSG getting a 3 1 win, putting pressure on the others. Um, before we talk about the last two games, um, probably the biggest story in France is what happened to Bordeaux, where the American owners also has not just decided to not fund uh, Bordeaux any, anymore and they have to go in administration and probably Bordeaux is in danger of being re relegated to the amateur ranks. Uh, they are losing to Lorient, which was a big result in the relegation uh, fight, also with Nantes winning at Strasbourg, also a pretty big result. Monaco uh, rides again with some Ben Yedda to a 1-0 win over Angers who just, um, Angers, I think it's Angers, I, I, I need to get this straight, Angers, uh, who just got absolutely uh, flattened by PSG, and then the Lyon-Lille game, boy was this a great game to watch. If you have not seen this game, uh, re-watch it, this was one of the best games I've seen this year so, uh, so far, back and forth, both teams attacking, and uh, both teams creating chances. Slimani gets the um, lead for Lyon after missing already a pretty big chance early on, but uh, assist was by Kakare. And then uh, just a few few minutes later, a really nice count of Bioburg Yilmaz uh, to uh, David, David, Jonathan David, who is falling down, is falling down, back heels it in, however it's called, offside. Correctly, so what well, 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 was also one well, just over the mid midway line? But that would have been a great goal, uh, one that you still can watch because it's so great. Uh, then Forge call, um, calls an own goal rather unluckily, and suddenly Leon finds themselves 2 0 up and a little bit the reverse from the mid. We actually thought Leon. You know, they were well in, in the game, but uh, the 2 0 lead was a little bit flat, setting to to them. Uh, just before halftime, a free kick for Lille and Pura Gilmas just yanks it in, and they were even com complaining that free kick is way too far, uh, way too far away from from goal. It should have been uh, even further down. Pura Gilmas didn't care. In the 60th, Gilmas, he is probably Lille's best player at at, at, this, at this moment. Another counter counter attack, um, counter attack, gets it to uh, David, who makes it 2-2. And then the game is really teetering on the edge. Uh, it could go either, either way, but the longer the game on, the more it went towards Lille's um, way. And then Yilma scores the winner 3 to Lille. And they can stay top with this win. PSG just behind it. It looks very much between those two. And I probably really need to get a little jersey. I have to be that frank because they are doing well although they're also in some financial trouble they might become champions but it might it's not secure that they will stay in the league from war over there which is another thing finances and french league but look at this title race Lyon is now out but we have still Lille, PSG and Monaco in there Monaco has not conceded a goal in a long 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 time on the bottom it's between Nantes and Nîmes who got goal goal goes down and who uh, gets into rally relegation Lorient kind of safe but watch Bordeaux if Bordeaux really goal goes down then both Nantes and Nîmes are saved so it is almost dead uh, there could be another wrench thrown in there uh, expected it is still Lille by a fraction of a PSG because they have the point advantage Lyon now very much said they will most likely not making a Champions League unless they probably win the important game that we'll see soon. Uh, as for the bottom, not might just scrape by with relegation, but again, Bordeaux, Bordeaux, that's a big story there. The next round, it's all about Monaco Lyon, and we just had that, and now let's see where, 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 it, where it will go here. PSG with last, not an easy task. Lille also at home, they always have been struggling, and Nice is uh, one of those. One day good, one day bad, bad opponents. Brest against Nantes with a Breton derby in there. Lorient against Angers. Angers is also not that uninteresting. And Nîmes against Reims. Yeah, have to see how it all develops. As I said, in Portugal, Sporting 
find themselves in the 54th tunnel down to Belenenge, missing also a penalty in the 40 seconds. So it could have been 1 1 at the half, but they show fighting spirit and Quartes and uh, Cabral with a late penalty get them to a 2-2, two -two. they're avoiding the first defeat. However, the other two big boys uh, get, get wins by figure rather emphatically. Yes, they were 1-1 one, one, one down, but Pizzi just before the half makes it 1-1, one, one, and then all hell breaks loose with Nunez Seferovic scoring twice and then Everton adding another one. It's a 5-1 destruction of Portimonenge. And Porto wins with a Marega goal over uh, Guimaraes, which at that point put Porto within four points of Sporting. Rather, rather close, still heavy advantage Sporting, but uh, this was a much, much bigger league. I think we had 10 points. Um, however, we had now in the uh, yesterday, and this is just the beginning of the round because Portugal thought that's not crazy, Sporting win a pretty big one over Braga, a game that they found themselves down, a man in the 18th minute, Inacio getting two yellow cards uh, within 20 to 20 minutes, and then Mateusz in the 81st getting the winning goal for Sporting, which gives them a huge boost because with that, Sporting is now seven points clear. Yes, Porto has a game in hand, but they're at this very moment, 87% chance of winning the title. I think this might have been one of those games that really, really uh, gives them the momentum. However, it also has tests with them. I think they still have to play Benfica as far as I know, not 100% that one, and it's still many, many games to go uh, there. Um, but in the expected standings, you can see Porto's slight chance, Benfica is out of it, Benfica might only finish in third place, which is also remarkable, and they would have to again go through all these uh, qualifying rounds. And in the next round, we have, so we have a lot uh, to be played still. We have uh, Benfica against Santa Clara. We have Mora Range against Porto. Um, but the next round, see Sporting against Nacional, Porto against Famalicão, and Tondela against Benfica. So, you know, all rather straightforward. Hopefully. You never know at this stage. So that's how it is. In any case, so many things happening. And I try to be as quick with this uh, video as possible. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists uh, that you might give interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my uh, channel to give you all the updates, all the things that rotate in my soccer universe. And with that, have a great day.